we know what God has promised us. Why are we so surprised always when it happens? That's what we'll talk about tonight uh, with the Sussex United Methodist Church. I'm Dan Gefford, the pastor of the Sussex United Methodist Church. We were having internet problems before, but now everything seems to be working fine. So I'm glad you're here. Thank you for being with us. Let's join together in worship as we begin with our prelude. Well, I'm glad you're here. I hope if you like these visit videos, you'll take a moment to indicate that you like it and that you'll write a comment to indicate where you're watching from, how you found out about it, or just to say hello to other people who may be watching and other people who may watch it later. We hope you will like and follow the page as well and that you'll share it with other people so that other people can see these videos. And while you're at it, we hope you'll subscribe to and like our videos on YouTube, and our YouTube channel is also the Sussex United Methodist Church. Thank you for watching wherever you're watching, and thank you for being here together. We hope you'll continue to be with us, and you'll keep us in your prayers. We'd like you to join now in singing our opening hymn, O Worship the King. Join me in our opening prayer. O oh Lord our God, we give thanks to you for this week, for keeping us safe through to this day. And we pray for all those who need you everywhere. We pray for Rich and Terry and Tom and all those who are struggling with illness or with child care responsibilities or injury, those who are recovering from surgery 
and those who are dealing with the coronavirus and all of its terrible complications. We pray also for those who are caring for the sick, whether they are in hospitals or nursing homes or other facilities or home caregivers as well. We pray for all those who provide for us, who provide for our food, for our clothing, for our gasoline, and for our plumbing, and all the things that we need. Those who take care of us deserve your special love, and we ask for it now. Lord, we pray for all those who are struggling with despair, with depression, with anxiety, whether caused by being cooped up at home or by other difficulties. Maybe people are worried about losing their jobs or worried about damage to their business or worried about family members or mourning the loss of loved ones. Lord, for all these people, we pray your care. We ask your blessing on all those who are our first responders, those who care for us and keep us safe, those who deliver us to hospitals, those who care for us there, those who keep us safe in our own homes. Lord, we also pray for those moving to new homes who are looking through the anxiety of dealing with new situations. Lord, we also lift up all those who are struggling with injustice, all those who are dealing with racism, with injustice and oppression and with violence, all those who are dealing with despair, Lord, may there be a new birth among us of compassion and love and concern, caring for all those who are weaker than we are, all those who are poorer than we are, all those who are less advantaged than we are, all those who are less able than we are or less resourced than we are. We know all the many ways in which you have blessed us and those who are in our care. We pray for all those also that we do not even know, that you will be with them and surround them with your love in these difficult times. We pray all these things in the name of Jesus, who promised to be with us always and who taught us to pray the words of the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Now I ask you to join me as we sing our next hymn, which is uh, going to be at the name of Jesus.
listen now for a word from God as we read from the Holy Scriptures, these familiar words from the Acts of the Apostles, chapter 2, verses 1 to 21. When the day of Pentecost had come, they were all gathered together in one place, and suddenly from heaven there came a sound like the rush of a violent wind, and it filled the entire house where they were sitting. Divided tongues as of fire appeared among them, and a tongue rested on each of them. All of them were filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in other languages as the Spirit gave them ability. Now there were devout Jews from every nation under heaven, living in Jerusalem. And at this sound the crowd gathered and was bewildered, because each one heard them speaking in the native language of each. Amazed and astonished, they asked, Are not all these who are speaking Galileans? And how is it that we hear each of us in our own native language? Parthians, Medes, Elamites, and residents of Mesopotamia, Judea and Cappadocia, Pontus and Asia, Phrygia and Pamphylia, Egypt and the parts of Libya belonging to Cyrene, and visitors from Rome, both Jews and proselytes, Cretans and Arabs, in our own languages we hear them speaking about God's deeds of power. All were amazed and perplexed, saying to one another, What does this mean? But others sneered and said, They are filled with new wine. But Peter, standing with the eleven, raised his voice and addressed them. Men of Judea and all who live in Jerusalem, let this be known to you. And listen to what I say. Indeed, these are not drunk, as you suppose, for it is only nine o'clock in the morning. No, this is what was spoken through the prophet Joel. In the last days it will be, God declares, that I will pour out my Spirit upon all flesh, and your sons and your daughters shall prophesy, and your young men shall see visions, and your old men shall see dreams. Even upon my slaves, both men and women, I will pour out my spirit in those days, and they shall prophesy. And I will show portents in the heaven above and signs on the earth below, blood and fire and smoky mist. The sun shall be turned to darkness and the moon to blood before the coming of the Lord's great and glorious day. Then everyone who calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved. A word from God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Now I'd like to speak for a minute to the kids among us. If you would listen to this story, you can tell that this is the very beginning of what we now know as the church. This is what you might call a celebration of that time or the church's birthday. If it's a birthday, it should be a party, something we celebrate and something we enjoy. When you go to a birthday party, what do you expect? I expect to see a lot of happy people. I expect to see a party going on. I expect cake and ice cream, maybe games. In the church's party, how do we how do we make a party out of it when we are separated from each other? How do we celebrate? Maybe we celebrate with some cake or dessert. Maybe we celebrate with games that we share with those around us, games that we know from other places and other times. Maybe it's a chance for us just to share the gifts we have, to be appreciative of all the things that God has done for us, and offer whatever we can to others. Well, what do we have to offer? What kind of gifts can we offer to God, God who has everything? Well, I think the first thing God would appreciate from us is attention. Just like we like attention, God would love to hear from us in prayer. If we take a moment just to tell God thank you for all that God has done for us, show our love, show our appreciation, and just converse. I used to say a prayer before I got in bed every night as a child. That's a good way to get in practice of that, especially if you don't know what to say. You can say something simple like, God, thank you for everything. and Thank you for my family. Thank you for all the ways in which you have surrounded us with love. And then you can say whatever you think of. If you don't think of anything else, you say, I'll talk to you later, God, and God will always be there. Another way we can show our celebration is to give little bits of kindness to other people around us. 
Help by being cooperative with our parents who need our help with things. Help by keeping our own area clean and straight. Help by picking up toys. There's all kinds of things we can do that other people will appreciate. Even sometimes just saying hello to people who are lonely and sad. Calling them on the phone is a way of showing our appreciation and our love. So that's a good way to celebrate a birthday. That's a good way to bring our gifts to God for this special time that God has given for us. So let's pray. God, we thank you that you always love us. You are always celebrating with us. And so we pray that you will help us to celebrate with you, to say our thanks, to celebrate your birthday of the church and be the church you want us to be. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Well, it was no secret what, that Jesus was promising the disciples something after his ascension. He said it multiple times. He promised that they would be clothed with power. That was the phrase he used in the gospel, according to Luke. It was the phrase that probably the same author used at the beginning of Acts of the Apostles as Jesus was preparing to reassume his position in heaven they asked him what was going to happen. He said, you'll be here, you'll be my witnesses, and you will be clothed with power. But it didn't look like that was going to happen anytime soon. The disciples were a motley group, mostly poor people with limited education. They were fishermen. One was a tax collector. They had a variety of different occupations, but none of them had a lot of money. They had a group of women with them, some of whom had some money. They had a group of people who had traveled from Galilee, <clears throat> but not much to show for it, not many people. Certainly not a group that you would think of as influencing the world, people who had a lot of connections or a lot of power. And that didn't seem to have changed any from the time Jesus was with them to the time Jesus was not in evidence right with them anymore. Whether or not they left Jerusalem or not, it was another holiday, and it was time for everybody to come back to Jerusalem to celebrate. 49 and 50 days after Passover is a holiday in the tradition of the Israelites called Shavuot. Shavuot. It was a holiday that celebrated the giving of the Torah commandments of God, the traditions and teaching of God to the people of Israel. It was a way of God's being present with the people always, no matter where they were. It was a gift of this written tradition that they carried with them, that they knew of as a reason to hope and believe in God's presence. And they, so they celebrated this giving of the Torah. And they celebrated it also at the time of the first harvest that you would dedicate the first fruits of to God in the temple. So people would bring the first bit of their barley harvest with them to present at the temple as a gift of gratitude to God. First harvest, the first fruits of the first harvest are always the cause for rejoicing. If you've ever had a garden, you know how thrilling it is when you first see a flower that you, is worth picking to take inside, or you first see vegetables that can be harvested, whether they're beans or cucumbers or radishes or that first tomato that turns ripe and is big enough to pick and eat. It's a thrill. My family, we used to take that first tomato and everybody line up next to the tomato vine and take a picture of the first tomato from our garden. It was a cause for celebration because it reminded us that there was hope for the future. There was life coming around again, that all these things were God's gift. It was a time for celebration, and so people would be gathered in Jerusalem. But even then, they had no big expectation that this was the moment they could expect the big power rush that Jesus had promised them. But what better time for God to spring a surprise on them? What better time for all these ideas about gifts and love and God's presence, these ideas of harvest, of new beginnings, of bringing the harvest to God. What better time for this rush of power expressed in this surprise event? 
and he felt a huge rush of energy and excitement and joy. People who were afraid to talk in public, who were always just quiet followers of Jesus, now could go out and speak to others in ways that they could understand, in their own language. They could speak as if there were tongues of fire right over their heads. They were so excited they were no longer afraid and they were filled with power. They didn't expect it, even though it had been promised. That sounds like us, doesn't it? We know Jesus has promised to be with us. We know that God has promised us power of the Holy Spirit. God has promised to take care of us always and never to let us go, but it is really easy to forget that. It is really easy to think, oh, these events were all way back in the distant past. These events are so long ago that we don't even know what to make of the descriptions of them. Exciting big things were happening in the earliest days of the church, but now all we can see is isolation, frustration, boredom, depression, sadness, decline. All we can see is the world that seems to be going nuts. People rushing out to party together and spread germs everywhere they go, unworried about what they might do to other people, not paying any attention to guidance from health officials, not paying any attention to what their recklessness may do to others. We think, what is coming to this place? What is happening to us? Where is the power to make any difference at all? But it is just that kind of time, just that kind of time when God surprises us. When if we are watching for it, if our eyes are open and our ears are tuned, God may be speaking to us. God may be surrounding us right now with the power we need to make a difference in the world, to reach out with an act of kindness and love to somebody who doesn't expect it at all, to put forward an idea of hope to people who have lost hope, to thread the needle of the difficult things that we have to do to be safe with the need to serve and care for others. This may be the time that we are filled with the power we need as a church, to be the bringers of hope to a world that so desperately needs hope. How do we tell what that is? Well, first we have to be watching for it. We have to believe in the possibility, the possibility that this may be a time God is speaking to us, calling to us, asking for us to be there in a time when others need us. It isn't always times like this that seem easy or that we seem to be obviously filled with skills and talents, but it's a time when people need us, a time when our love and compassion can make a difference to others, a time when our reaching out in confidence and hope and love toward people who feel like nobody loves them or cares for them or respects them, and those words are needed. This is the time when we can really be the church if we look for opportunities not just the opportunities that are mentioned in our Saturday and Sunday services, but other opportunities. I'm hearing stories all the time about people in our church who are doing amazing acts of kindness for others, who are calling them in unexpected ways or sending cards and letters. I imagine that, cards and letters in these times, who are sending gifts of food, and offering opportunities to get to doctors, offering to just be kind and respectful to those who are serving in places of public con public conveyance, like our grocery stores, our gas stations, our other stores that are struggling so much, and restaurants that are struggling to keep going. There are so many ways people are reaching out and helping that I am constantly inspired and lifted up. I know this can be a great time for the church. I know it in my guts because of all that you are doing. You are to me the sign of God's power and love in this time that is clothing us, the church, with the power we need to change the world. Believe that. It is true. We just have to be willing to try. That's why this time is a time to celebrate, not just a commemoration of ancient history, but a celebration of present reality. God loves us now. God thinks we are special now. God fills us with power now to do what needs to be done. Let's not drop the ball. Amen.
Let's pray. God, we thank you for being with us in all the difficult times of life. We thank you for surrounding us with love and surrounding us with compassion and surrounding us with comfort. But we also thank you for surrounding us with power, for strengthening our arms and our convictions and our confidence so that we can do what is needed to build your kingdom here and now. Lord, we thank you and pray you will not let go of us, not lose confidence in us, not lose heart. This is a time when we can help, when we can be something to make the world a better place. For that, we give you thanks and praise always. Amen. A couple of quick announcements. I want to remind you that we are honoring our mothers with gifts to the United Methodist communities to help keep our retirement home system strong and vibrant in a time when so many people need it. They've done amazing things keeping people safe, even in close quarters throughout this pandemic. They were right on the ball very early on, making sure that people have not been exposed and they have kept people safe. The downside of that is they've kept people safe through isolation. That makes people feel lost and lonely. So we're trying to gather cards for people who are living in the United Methodist homes, particularly in Bristol Glen, which is close by in Newton. If you'd like to send a card to people there, I hope you will send it to me and we'll forward it on uh, from the Skylands district of our church. You know we have people from our own congregation living there in the Fabers, and we'll send cards to them and give them a phone call to remind them that we care about them. Same with people who are living in other retirement homes, assisted living and nursing facilities. The same with people you know who are mostly stuck at home. Not necessarily totally stuck at home, but mostly. Pick up your phone directory from the church and give them a call. This is a great time to show your love. We're making gifts to the United Methodist communities to honor our moms. We've already honored a lot of people from our congregation, including Rose, June Rose Stuckey, Carolyn Elizabeth Baer, Marilyn McCann, Susan Parsons, Arlene Giacchini, Holly Tiedemann, all the SUMC moms, and all of our mothers and fathers. And this week we add Nora Kosh to that list. We're also sending cards and notes and letters and pictures to the hospitals to show our appreciation for all those who are working so hard. The same will be sent also to our nursing homes in the area. If you will send me those cards, we'll forward those on. Those to the hospital can be sent directly to Reverend Randy Parks, Spiritual Care Department, uh, Newton Medical Center at 175 High Street in Newton. That's 07860. I hope You'll continue to do that. We're also painting rocks with a picture of cardinals or redbirds on them as a sign of compassion and, and appreciation for those who have lost loved ones in the pandemic. It's a sign of hope, a sign of life, also a sign of memory, remembered loved ones. So I've sent a bunch of rocks on this week. I left a box in the uh, entranceway to Helen's house at the church if you want to drop the rocks or cards off there, we'll get them delivered. Uh, please also continue to send your contributions of gifts of food cards that we can pass on to members of our community who may be food insecure. Uh, that way we can supplement the work of the Sussex Help Center, where we're also continuing to provide our support in terms of food and, and aid. Um, I hope you'll also continue to support the church. Uh, send your gifts to P.O. Box 244, Sussex, New Jersey, 07461, or go online to uh, gnjumc.org slash online giving. We need your support so much at this time. I hope you will be as generous as you can. We are important to this community. We need to be there for everyone, and I know your continued support will make a big difference in that. Now I... Pray you'll continue to be the church as wherever you go and whatever you're doing. In the excitement about that, in our quest to be God's hands and feet, let's join together in singing our closing hymn, God of Grace and God of Glory. i 
and God of glory, on thy people pour thy power. Crown thine ancient church a story, bring her bud to glorious flower. Grant us wisdom, grant us courage for the facing of this hour, for the facing of this hour. Cure thy children's warring madness, bend our pride to thy control. Shame our want and selfish gladness, rich in things and poor in soul. Grant us wisdom, grant us courage, lest we miss thy kingdom's goal. Lest we miss thy kingdom's goal. So thanks to our great organist, Sharon Craig, for supplying our accompaniment tonight. Thanks to you for being here and sharing this time. I appreciate you being there so much. You give me a lift every time I see your name and every time I know that you are the church, that we are the church together, that we are not confined to any building or any space. We are connected to each other and we are connected to the community that needs us. So we can go forth from this time and place to love and serve the Lord unafraid, knowing that wherever we go and whatever we do and whatever happens to us, we will be clothed in the power we need to make a difference in the world. And we will be surrounded always by the love of God, the parent of us all, the grace and peace of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, and the communion and fellowship of the Holy Spirit that go with us and abide with us now and always. Thanks be to God. Amen. 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 God bless you so much. Have a great and safe week. Be healthy and safe. Amen. <laughs>